he's out in the boat. Oh, really? This is the first coat of paint back here. So what I have going here, this is two pork tenderloins. Everybody is wondering what we thought of butter chicken. We have a clothing envelope. We have a household uh, supply envelope. Well, good morning and welcome to my channel. I'm Jennifer, this is A Country Life, and it is windy and I am going into the Home Depot this morning. I have some paint. We actually are switching kids' bedrooms around, uh, putting Joseph and Peter into Maria's room, which is bigger, putting Maria into the smaller room, and so we need to paint. And Warren and I started the project last night, and we need more paint. So back to the store, we need to get a little bit of, just a few supplies. All right, I just had a sneezing attack, so you'll have to bear with me. A couple observations. I was just in the parking lot here. I had to call home because I was asking Warren if he had some nails that he was going to check on this morning before I left. I left without ever asking him if he like checked or whatever. And so I called home and Joe was the only one in the house. And I talked to Joe and he, this is how our conversation went. Um, hi, Joe. Yeah. Hi, mom. I know it's you. Hi, is dad in the house? Um, no. What is he doing? He's out in the boat. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Can you take the phone out to him so I can ask him about nails? No, I'm watching The Sound of Music. Thanks, bye. <laughs> I was like, okay, bye. <laughs> so that was just kind of a fun, I just had to share that little story. And then as I'm out here in the parking lot, as I was making that call home, a couple in a truck next to me, they bought a bunch of tea posts and they were loading them and he grabbed a pile and as he was and she was just leaning over to grab a pile and as he grabbed the pile and like brought them up and like turned you know they're like five feet or something like that long um he just whacked her in the side of the head and then he laughed he laughed she was not having it she was pretty ticked um she didn't look like she got really hurt i mean i didn't i, I don't know Anyway, they already drove away. Another random bit of information. I was looking at rugs, like area rugs, possibly for the boys' room for in between. We're gonna, they're not going to be in bunk beds anymore. They're going to be in two twin size twin beds next to each other with a little space in between. And I was looking at some area rugs, and I cut myself on a rug. On a rug. Clearly, that is not going to be the right rug for us. I mean, rugs are not supposed to be sharp. End of story. I'm on my way home. I'm home now, and I wanted to have a pretty good cooking day here before Warren comes back in and we get going on the painting project, which I'll show you in just a second what's happening back there. I went down to the basement freezer, one of our basement freezers, to look for pork sausage because I really wanted to make some biscuits and gravy for lunch. It's cold and windy. We have just come off of like two solid weeks, maybe more, of just beautiful, just beautiful, beautiful weather. It's been so warm and we've had a lot of sunshine. Anyway, it's cold, it's windy, biscuits and gravy just sounded good. I could not find the pork sausage because the freezer is so jam-packed. But I did end up finding some pepperoni here because I was thinking um, my aunt sent me a little like a little reel or something, and they showed making some little heart-shaped tortillas, putting a little pizza sauce on, putting some cheese and pepperoni. I thought that would be kind of cute. I don't know if we'll do it. I don't know when I'll do it, but I just thought that that might be kind of a really quick and easy lunch. Uh, tomorrow is the Super Bowl, and so I pulled out some sausage. This, I think, is my last frozen applesauce. There could be one in another freezer, but just to free up freezer space, I thought, let's start using this rather than using the canned applesauce. And then I also found this pork tenderloin. I'm pretty sure I got this when they were like, buy one, get one free, and here it's still, it's still in the freezer. And so I pulled this up. So this may be for tonight's supper, if I can get that uh, to thaw in time. I'm still gonna go out and look for some pork sausage in another freezer though. But I wanna show you what we are doing in the bedroom here. This is the first coat of paint back here. And we ripped up all the flooring all the way down to the pine floorboards from well, from 1947. This is going to be Maria's room. This is just the first coat of paint. I have no idea how it is looking 
it's like through the camera here. I guess it looks pretty pink, huh? Well, there you can definitely see from the ceiling to the wall here. Um, yeah, Warren and I put this coat of paint on fairly late last night. I mean, I think we were wrapping up around 10 o'clock. And now later today, we're gonna get the second coat of paint on. And then we did get new flooring. So all the flooring got ripped up and we're putting in new flooring. That carpeting, well, that carpeting has been in there since 1997. And well, you know, kids are pretty hard on carpeting. There's a lot of, a lot of spills, a lot of this, that, and the other things. So we're actually going to be putting down the LVT, Luxury Vinyl Tile. I think that's what it's called. We got the Life Proof, which has a great warranty. We have that in the bathroom, and I really, really like it in there. We went with a different color because we just didn't want something as dark as what's in the bathroom. And I think it's just going to look so good. I cannot wait to get all of her uh, feminine, girly things in that room. It's going to look so pretty. Totally changed my mind on lunch. I do have... Um, the buffalo chicken lunch meat got opened on Thursday. Today's Saturday. Allergens must be flying around in the air or something because holy cow, my allergies are just really flaring up. Anyway, as I was saying, that buffalo chicken was opened on Thursday and I don't like lunch meat to go much more than, you know, like three days at the max. Um, and so I thought, since I can't find any pork sausage, because I think it's at the bottom of the freezer right now, and I've been kind of dealing with my right shoulder has just been hurting. I don't know if it's rotator cuff or what exactly it is, but trying to lift and hoist all those uh, frozen boxes out was just not working. So I just brought this in. We're just going to make like some toasted sandwiches for lunch. That's still going to be delicious, and it'll be warm and... Yeah, it'll be, that'll make for a good lunch. We'll do that and I'll have to do biscuits and gravy another day uh, or sometime when I can get Warren to help me lift off those big boxes. All right, well, let's get some pumpkin bars going. A half teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna do a teaspoon of baking soda, a teaspoon of baking powder. We're gonna do two cups of sugar and two cups of flour. Let's do two teaspoons of cinnamon and two teaspoons of pumpkin pie spice. I'm just gonna, whoops. This is always unplugged lately and I don't know why. One cup of oil. Uh, one can of pumpkin. And four eggs. Mix really well. I'm going to use that flour spray, the baking spray, to spray my 10 by 15 Pyrex dish. I see that I'm just about out of pumpkin pie spice. And so in cookbook number one, which is where the pumpkin bars recipe is, on page 47, I also have a recipe for pumpkin pie spice. If you need a teaspoon of pumpkin pie spice, it's just a half teaspoon of cinnamon, a quarter teaspoon nutmeg, an eighth of ginger, and an eighth of cloves. You can just mix that all together and put it right into your existing pumpkin pie spice container or like those little, let me see if I can find one quick. The little ball jars and they even come with like a little spice lid little shaker lid. I really like these jars too. These are helpful. Like see, this is like a pizza seasoning. I, I honestly, I like the Portesi better. That's why I haven't remade any of it. I have my shrimp taco seasoning and I have it like all made up. So when I want to make some shrimp tacos, uh, which would have been helpful last night that I would have remembered that I had this because I actually just made up fresh, but this was backwards and I didn't realize what it was. Oven just preheated to 350. So I'm going to get this in. And that makes a nice cake, and so that's going to have to go in for, for sure, 25 minutes pumpkin pie spice. So there's four teaspoons of cinnamon. And then for nutmeg, we're going to need two teaspoons of nutmeg. Sometimes it's helpful to give it a little bit of a shake. Then we're going to do ginger. We're going to need a whole teaspoon of ginger, whole teaspoon of cloves. And I could have done this probably 
times 16 and it would have fit in here but this is a good amount and now I have pumpkin pie spice spice blends are always more expensive to buy than the individual spices because they're they've mixed it for you uh, but I will say if you don't use individually if you're not going to use cinnamon and nutmeg and ginger and cloves it is going to be cheaper right to just buy the one little container that you need of pumpkin pie spice uh, but if you tend to use a lot of spices then buy the individual spices and mix your own always will be cheaper so earlier this week i received my dried sourdough starter from anna at come on show it show it show it <laughs> at stay the course homestead she's super active on facebook and instagram and she does have a youtube channel so you guys might want to check um out all her at all the different places anyway she's another wisconsin um mom and yeah she bought lots and lots of cranberries from us last year anyway i ordered some sourdough this i'm finally finally getting into the sourdough thing i need needed to measure out five grams and you guys the only thing i had was this very very old triple beam balance uh but i have my five grams measured out here i'm going to get that into a mason jar and show you what i'm going to do to get this started all right well, we are going to get this into a mason jar right now there we go i need 25 grams now of just warm water like 74 to 80 degrees warm water and it says here that i need to stir until all of the starter is submerged in water and there's not very much water here 25 grams of water is not very much ring the bell for dad and put the cranberry sauce on all right so this is how our sandwiches are looking i actually have some leftovers from warren warren and i went on a date night um two nights ago and so I have my leftovers from that so that's what I'm gonna have um, but I'm just going to put lettuce on for on their sandwiches and I'm also going to put pickles it's just Warren and me and Joe home right now so really easy for lunch last night we had shrimp tacos and so we have coleslaw left uh, both Joseph and I uh, will have some coleslaw and I have some kettle go chips ring the bell, yeah. go ring the bell for dad honey uh, We'll have some kettle chips. I'm gonna throw some pickles. Did I tell you I was gonna throw pickles on their sandwiches too? So lettuce and pickles. We are all finished up with lunch here and I just got to working in the kitchen and I completely forgot to turn on the camera. So, and I don't think I showed you that the pumpkin bars came out of the oven. They had to be in for about 30 minutes, right? Right, because I had it set for 25 and then I went another five minutes. All right, now I just made the frosting and I just followed right along with the recipe that's in the cookbook. And so that is three ounces of cream cheese, six tablespoons of butter, a teaspoon of vanilla, and two cups of powdered sugar. Now you can add a little splash of milk. Sometimes I do that too. So if you like it even a little bit more cream cheesier than buttery, I also like with my cranberry bars, that recipe, is uh, four ounces of cream cheese and four tablespoons of butter with a little bit of milk, vanilla, and powdered sugar. And that works great as well. So, all right, let me get this frosting on here and then, and then it's gonna be time to paint. Actually, I'm gonna get things cleaned up. I'm gonna get things cleaned up here and then it's gonna be time to paint. Well, I have a little treat for you guys. Brittany's here, that's Nick's fiance. She's helping me with some supper right now and she was actually just helping paint so the guys are out working on warren's ice house and for supper tonight i'm putting together some pork tenderloin so a while back like a year ago i got a hello fresh meal and i saved the card because i remember really liking the recipe now it calls it makes like a mustard apricot sauce over the pork tenderloin but guess what i don't have the apricot preserves so I don't know if I'm going to try rhubarb jelly or cranberry jelly. I'm not sure. Blueberry jelly? That one doesn't sound right. I was going to try to kind of a, sort of adjust this recipe to work for that. So what I have going here, this is two pork tenderloins, and I'm just um, browning it on all sides. So... Yeah, I just wanted it to get nice and brown, and then I'm going to transfer it to this cookie sheet. And what it's 
says here on the HelloFresh recipe is I should bake it at 450 degrees for something like 10 to 12 minutes until it's done. If I remember correctly, it took longer than 10 to 12 minutes until it was cooked through. Um, we're going to make some green beans. We're not going to roast them though because, I don't know, my, most of my kids don't really care for them roasted. They'd rather them just be steamed. And we're going to do something with potatoes. I'm not sure what yet, but once I get these into the oven, then we'll make a plan and go from there. So this is how everything turned out. Joe is really going for it and going to try the sauce. We're calling it cranberry mustard glaze. I, I took a little taste. It's okay. I didn't think it was fabulous, so we'll see. We'll see what the verdict is. But I think originally with the apricot jam, it was, it was better. I thought it was better. Well, it is Super Bowl Sunday now, and we had like a big brunch and everything at church, but we're home. I'm just, you guys can keep that on, I don't mind. And I am getting ready some food for the Super Bowl tonight. We, we're not having anybody over, it's just us. But we still want to have some snacks, and we need to eat supper anyway. I am making blue ribbon beef nachos, and so I have two pounds of ground venison with one very large onion diced up. And once this all browns, I'm just kind of waiting for it to brown all the way. I will be adding in a can of refried beans. I also have to go down and get a jar of salsa. So I'll put in a whole 16 ounce jar of salsa and some chili powder, some salt, a little bit of pepper, and a little bit of shredded cheese. I'm, and I'll let that just kind of simmer and warm all day. And then tonight we'll serve that with chips. And uh, I already chopped up some black olives. I'll pull out the sour cream. I'll pull out what else will we do? Sour cream, some hot sauce, and the chips, I think. Oh, and some shredded cheese also. All right, well, I was just getting my sourdough starter, I guess doing the second day. So for three days here in the morning, what I have to do is add 25 grams of unbleached flour and 25 grams of warm water. So still using my ancient, um, <laughs> my ancient centogram here a triple beam balance, but it's working just fine. So anyway, this is what it's looking like right there, kind of like thick cake batter. So what I have to do is just cover this and then tomorrow and the next day I'll do that same process. I'm back into the kitchen now. It's getting closer to Super Bowl time and I wanted to make some cornflake clusters. It's been a while since I've done this. Warren's been asking for weeks. So let's see if I can get you guys to the recipe here. And we are still in the sound of music phase. This plays on loop <laughs> constantly. All right, I mean, things could be worse, right? Five cups cornflakes, one cup of salted peanuts, one cup of sugar, one cup of corn syrup, and one cup of peanut butter. Josh! <laughs> I've got a yodeler in the background here. So these three, ing these three ingredients here, I'm going to, no, sorry. These two ingredients, I'm gonna to bring to a boil, but then I'm gonna turn off the heat, stir in the peanut butter until it all melts together. And in my bowl over here, I already have it greased. I'm gonna add in my one cup of peanuts and my five cups of cornflakes, get that mixed. It's always good to have that ready before bringing everything to a boil over here. If you notice the recipe says not dry roasted this is just all i happen to have on hand right now normally i would use just like the canned cocktail peanuts i think those work best i'm doing things that i remember my grandma doing yeah like what like using a kitchen utensil to pull something from the from the cupboard you know something you can't reach or something that as you keep grabbing it, it just keeps on going, pushing back further and further.
side. Purdy uses that play action fake and everyone gets movement up front. All right, good morning. I don't even think the kids know that I came into the car here. Yeah, they're ripping around on the four-wheeler a little bit here. So we're actually off to go see grandma or my mom. And, <clears throat> oh my goodness, okay. But somebody surprised me with a little rock on the steering wheel here, a little kitty cat rock. I guess that's my little gift today. So I'm gonna get the kids into the car here. I don't know why they don't have coats. I mean, Joe, he has a coat, but it's cold. There's actually a little bit of frost on the windshield. Still parking outside because we have all the boys' stuff into the... Well, I'm just dropping off uh, shipments today, so I just want to give a shout out to Deborah, Deborah, Sandra, Victoria, Joanne, Janie, and Carol. So Carol. stay, watch, watch your mail. Cookbooks are on their way. Well, we're home now here from the day. Super great visit with my mom. Um, just a little bit of an update because I know I mentioned back like early in the year that she had been um, quite sick and that I had to go over a couple times and some hospital stays and things like that. Well, anyway, she's just doing so fabulous right now. Isn't she, Maria? Mm -hmm. Grandma is fabulous right now. We got home and Warren was like, hey, should we go out for supper tonight? And I used to argue with him a little bit about that. I'd be like, no, we don't need to go out for supper and that. And now I'm like, sure, let's go. So we're going to go out to a little cafe tonight. So I just needed to do laundry. So I am just folding laundry quick before we go because I figure at least I can try to get something done here today. Since I was just doing the laundry, I wanted to give you guys an update on these wool dryer balls. So, and the update that I wanted to give you was this. One of the things it said on them is that it was supposed to reduce dry time. And I'm not 100% sure if it's reducing the dry time because I just haven't been really paying attention to that. But one thing I noticed right off the bat was that when I used them, these really thick jeans of Warren's, these are the lined with flannel, like his work jeans. Sometimes when I would, before using the dryer balls, I noticed that when I would pull them out, they would still be a little bit damp because they're just so much thicker than anything else that would be in the dryer with them at that time. And they have been dry, completely dry, the last however many times. And now today, when I was gonna give you guys the update and share that with you, guess what? I pulled the jeans out and they're not dry, they're actually still damp. So I can't even say that they're completely uh, working at, you know, tumbling it perfectly so that it dries completely. Uh, but I do know that I'm really liking the lavender, it's the Better Homes and Gardens lavender essential oil. I really like it. I Every two times I use the dryer, I just take the the essential oil and I just like drip, 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 drip. Probably a good 10 to 12, maybe, maybe even 15 drips I put onto each dryer ball and then I just throw them in the dryer. And the scent is, um, it's a little bit since it's so natural, uh, it is just a little bit earthy, but I'm actually really liking it. And I've noticed that it's not real strong. Uh, it's more strong when you first put them in there, but it just sort of gives a nice overall kind of scent to the laundry. Anyway, just wanted to give you guys an update because I know I said when I was doing my last big grocery shopping haul, I had gotten them and I was like, I have no idea what I'm gonna think about these, but I do really like them. Good morning, everybody. We are gonna keep this video going. I am going to work on uh, the next steps for my sourdough starter here. I actually missed yesterday. I hope that's okay. So this is technically going to be my day three. And yeah, here I am, just brushing up on my triple beam balance skills again. All right, this morning I am going to get started. I have uh, some bread here. We There was extra bread left from the kids um, fundraising brunch that they did this weekend at church. And so everybody was bringing bread home. So I have a couple loaves of bread here. Uh, this one I am going to make overnight caramel French toast. It's not actually going to be overnight though. It's just going to be until lunch. So it's just eight o'clock here now and I wanted to, I'm gonna get this put together, put it in the refrigerator for just a little while, and then for lunch, we will do the caramel French.
All right, I just talked Warren into stopping for a second and chiming in on some of the meals that I had made. So the question is butter chicken. Everybody is wondering what we thought of butter chicken. It was fine, not a favorite, but it was fine. I mean, yeah. we ate it, we ate the leftovers, the, none of it went to waste, but I, I wouldn't, it, it's not in my favorite category. No, I, I would not make it again either. Um, even though, like I said, or like you said, all the leftovers got we eaten. We ate it all. We ate all of it. And for me, the next day, I liked it better, I think because I sort of had an idea of what the flavor was going to be. I still can't really describe. If someone said, what does butter chicken taste like? I have no idea what the flavoring, like what's the seasoning in there? I just don't know. Uh, just very different than anything. Isn't that more of a curry seasoning? I don't know. I, I don't know. I mean, I know it's Indian food, but I just don't know. It was good, just not a favorite. Not not a favorite. Um, okay, and then the other thing was the apple cake. This was so long ago. Do you remember? It was the apple cake, and I put a cream cheese frosting on it. Oh, yeah, that was excellent. <laughs> was it the frosting or the cake? Well, I'm a sucker for cream cheese frosting. <laughs> right. So, but it was good. The cake was, was very good. It got kind of like a little crunchy top because of all the brown sugar in it. Yeah, it didn't last long. We ate it all. Yeah, that that was good. And then the other question was beans and meat. Oh, beans and meat, definite winner. Yeah, I like beans and meat a lot. Yeah, me too. What I liked about it was that it was kind me of too. like, and I think I said this in the video, it was kind of like calico beans that my grandma and Aunt Linda always made, and I've made plenty of times too, but it was a lot simpler because you only had two kinds of uh, beans, mm -hmm. one kind of meat. Yeah, very simple meal, but very, Super very hearty. Simple. Uh, mm -hmm. Great flavor. Yeah, yeah. Good. I would, I definitely would make something like that again. Yeah. Um, and Joe loved it. Oh yeah, Joe loved it. Peter, I think Peter liked it. Peter Sam liked ate it. it. He took leftovers yeah. to work. He liked it. Maria, no, no. not so much. No. <laughs> I think she took a teaspoon and maybe ate a quarter of a teaspoon. But mm -hmm. I mean, that's to be expected. All right. Were there any other? Let me just think quick here. And I think that was it. I think those were all the things that you guys were asking about if we liked mm -hmm. and what our thoughts were on it. So, all right, thanks. All right, bye. Let's do it. <laughs> all right, let me point out that in the recipe it does say, top with as many slices of bread as you can squeeze in without double layering. However, that is if you are going to use really thick slices of bread. Now this is pretty thick but I would not say that these are a full inch. These are probably three quarters of an inch. So I do like to uh, overlap them or do them double thickness just because otherwise it's just not really enough for our family. Um, so you just kind of, and it's okay if you break them up, make them fit however you can. I'm gonna really stuff this in here and I am going to now this bread was actually cut um, specifically for the French toast for our weekend fundraising breakfast at church so it is a little bit thicker than if you just bought sliced uh, what is this French bread or Italian bread it's a little bit thicker the thinner slices, double layered, would probably work a little bit better. The point is here is that you guys, this is so forgiving. Just jam some bread in here. If they're really thick slices, don't overlap them. If they're thin, definitely, definitely overlap all the way. I have my, my mixture here, just your typical French toast mixture. Eggs, milk, vanilla, cinnamon. I'm gonna get this poured over and really try to make sure that you get it poured onto all the pieces, especially the ones kind of sticking up. So it soaks up. The recipe says to sprinkle the cinnamon over the top. Most of the time, I just add it right to the vin uh, right to the milk and egg mixture, that works. I'm gonna cover this, I'm gonna put it in the refrigerator, and then you wanna bring this out of the refrigerator 30 minutes before you intend to start baking it. So this is the little thing I use when I want to put this kind of like wave in my hair. Anyway, just wanted to show you guys. 
It's been a little while since I've done my hair like this. Well, no, just about, a, just a couple weeks, but there was a while where I was kind of doing it quite often and I got a lot of questions. This is just, it's called Bedhead Wave Artist. I got it at Walmart. All right, I got the kids going with school and I just plugged in, well, not just, but this is, what do they call this? The steam shot. So let me see if I can do this here. Hmm, I think I need to add water to it. Shoot. All right, well, I'm going to, I thought that there was enough. Oh, no, there's some. I'm going to let this heat up a little bit longer, and then I'm actually going to steam shot this area of the toilet, like right here. I don't want to show you guys too close, but right in here, that always, you know, just like tends to get dirtier, even though you wipe it with, you know, the little Clorox wipes and stuff, but like in the actual cracks where the seat goes up and down kind of in there it gets kind of gross so I like to use the steam shot it actually gets all of the um you know, gets all the grossness out of there all right it's like good as new again it's this is where I'm talking about where it gets kind of gross in these little like grooves in there and it really helps that steam shot really helps to get that out. I can hear kids bickering a bit about who's sitting where doing their schoolwork so I'm going to get this unplugged. We'll let that cool off before we have to put that away. I'm going to get out there do some schoolwork with the kids and um And just like that, it's 10.45. I have to bring out the, the French toast that we're going to be doing for lunch. And I, I don't know where the time has gone this morning. Here's kind of how the day went. So got started off with schoolwork right before. And Maria was working on geography. Peter was working on religion. What else was happening? Peter's waiting for me right now to do some correcting with math. But in the meantime, the coffee mug got broke. <laughs> Uh, coffee spilled. We washed up the schoolroom floor where that spilled. That led me to doing a bigger vacuum. Um, there's just oh, always something. Warren got back. He jumped into the kitchen right away and he's over here creating Valentine's gifts. Right? Yeah, I am. Yes, you are. He's so sweet that way. Every year <laughs> makes us M&M cookies. This year? Is She's this what you do hearts. every year? Usually I make bigger ones, yeah. but this year I'm doing a little smaller hearts. And, and shape then... them with the spoon? I've never seen you do that before. Well, you know, i got to keep it fresh. Yep. Always learning new ways to do it, right? And do you have to make a double batch of dough, or nope. is that a single batch? Single. That is a single. All right. So he's doing that. He also put the floor leveler down in the... In, in like what's going to be Maria's room now. So mm. he's working on, do you want the light on? Sure. How's that? That's um, better. Yeah, so we put that down. We actually thought that was going to be different. I mean, maybe we didn't really talk about it, but I thought it was going to be more of a liquid that you poured on and then it just sort of naturally leveled itself into the little low spot in the floor. But it's more of a concrete that you trawl in place. Anyway, so he got that put put into place, and now we're going to go and work on correcting math. Peter, are you ready? Yep. Okay. Isn't that sweet? Let's see yours, Joe. Oh, those are so nice. I love them. That was awfully nice of Dad, huh? Buster Goose, you're <laughs> son, you're dead. Buster Goose. All right, Warren has moved on to outside work now, and left the kitchen to me so I can make the French toast here for um, lunch. We're going to end up eating a little bit late. It's already 20 to 12, but everybody just had a couple of cookies, so they're tied over just fine. I'm going to get this in the oven for 40 minutes at 350 degrees. At some point, I'm going to make some bacon, and I know there's a lot of egg in here, but I'm also going to make some scrambled eggs, just because I know that Joe and I are definitely going to want scrambled eggs and bacon. And I haven't, I have not been perfect about the low carb by any means. I'll probably have just like a little piece of this, because I've been trying to just 
still eat small amounts of the things, you know, like something like this that I really enjoy, but just not go hog wild. I don't think Joe's going to eat that at all. He doesn't like anything. If you can believe it, he does not like cinnamon rolls. He doesn't like French toast. He doesn't like pancakes. He doesn't like waffles. <laughs> Nothing bready breakfast. Um, we have kind of tried to trick him into thinking that potato pancakes are just hash browns we say to him and he usually after a little while he'll attempt and he'll take a bite and then he'll be like blah no he's not going to eat that so even a potato pancake he's not real fond of so anyway scrambled eggs and bacon for joe and i and i know i have some fruit in the refrigerator so i'll just uh, slice up fruit either apples oranges cuties i don't know whatever i have let me help you with that and so the guys right now are actually going out to... Oh, he has these super, like, slipper socks on. I don't know if that's even going to work. Tell you what, take the, take your foot out. But he Did he get the there, one? Put oh, these no. on. There we go, yeah. Something a put little different. On. So they those have to go get some deep. chairs out of the deer stand for some friends. Got it? And yeah. that's what they're going to do. I'll help you zip up in just a sec here. All right, this is out of the oven. It was in for 40 minutes. Nice and like crispy around the edges here. It makes it so good. And what works really well is when you serve it, let's get the plate close, and you serve it, and you can like turn it over because then all of the yummy caramely is on top. If you're really needing some sugar, you can serve it up with some syrup, you know, pure maple syrup, you can sprinkle a little powdered sugar over it if you need to, or honestly, it's just good just like this. It is much, much later in the afternoon, and we are gonna head to the library now, so we just have a few things that have to get returned. And... Come on, Joe. And I had to remind Joe, no cowboy boots with athletic shorts. <laughs> right? That was, that was your style, wasn't it? Cowboy boots and athletic shorts? So I just had to grab my cash for uh, the chicken feed. And it just made me think a little bit about... We are still a cash couple. We keep actual envelopes and we actually put real cash into them. But it is so helpful to have a budget like that where you specifically spell out the things that you want to... Whoa, someone was sitting here. That was really tall. To have it all spelled out as to what you... where you want your money to go every month because then... Uh, and. And then stick to that, of course, because now, but now when it's time to get chicken feed, I just go, I grab the cash, and we're good to go. I don't have to be like, oh my gosh, do I have money in my checking account? Oh my goodness, do I have, you know, the money for that? Same thing with, we have a clothing envelope. We have a household uh, supply envelope. And so that just helps that, like, let's say one of the kids needs something. They need some new pants. All of a sudden, they're growing like a weed, and they need shoes, or they need a jacket. All right, my camera just turned off. But as I was saying, like if the kids need clothes or something like that, we have that specific budget. Or I mean, if Warren or I or whatever, if we need something like that, we have a specific budget. So we know that it's okay if we have to spend $50 on some new clothes or something like that, that we know that's not going to take away from our grocery budget. Or we know that's not going to take away from our uh, paying our electricity bill or whatever it is. So it just helps to have that budget. We just know that it's there because we've budgeted for that and we're both very aware when that particular section of the budget runs out and you know and that we have to just wait until we replenish it for the next time so all right off to the library kids are getting antsy in the back well it is movie night tonight and so we are out shopping maria can you guys guess what she wants to make she's got some Fruit. Pudding, fruit, and... Whipped cream. Whipped cream. So what is she going to make? Parfaits. Parfaits. <laughs> and they have such an awesome line right now of kids stuff for kids bedding. These curtains at $7.99 for two panels. 
I don't know. I'm just trying to think of pink curtains along with the pink walls and the pink bedding is going to be too pink. I don't know. It's hard to say, but look at these blankets here too. $9.99, you guys, for either a full or a twin size. That is such a great price too. I was looking at possibly for the boys. I wonder if they would like blue. Or just gray. There is gray. Maybe they would like gray. So what they're doing is they're doing the yep. you could get pink curtains, pink blanket, kind of like whole, pink bedding. full sets. And then they have these nice over the door hangers too. Those are really nice. Huh. Are you doing so anything? much neat stuff. They are so cute. So, so cute. Well, we are going to sign out tonight. And I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. Again, just kind of all over the place. Lots of little bits of daily life sprinkled in with some food in there and things like that. So we're going to watch Mulan tonight. Yeah. Uh, have our own movie night, just like the guys are doing their movie night. And we'll hope to see you guys again soon. Bye. Bye.